Number one. Okay, first question, page 36. In my practice exam uh, book, 3067 number. This would be the fastest way to do it. PI I is going to be XI. We just found that. Times PI naught. There we go. 3.75 times 45. Times that should be it. Okay, number two. Yes? Do you have a page number for me? Oh, a winter what year? Winter 18. Okay, give me a moment to find that. Winter 18, my exam, what number? 15A, this is page 14. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, uh, here, uh, we've got one gram combusted in a bomb calorimeter, that much heat is released. Calculate the delta U of combustion of one mole of cocaine, and then calculate the delta H. Okay, just part A. Okay, I think I was just trying to mess around with you. Oh shoot, I lost it. Was it 15? Okay. Uh, the uh, delta U is just this. Uh, this number but converted. This number but converted. Remember, so this is this is doing it. When you see a delta U and a delta H, basically what I'm saying is the word term plays some role in the in the equation. So I, let me see if I can get this all in here. One page. Delta U is delta H uh, minus P delta V. So I'm saying really the, the energy that we give you is really that. Remember, these are usually equal when the work term is small. But when I'm asking for both, I'm implying that uh, the work term is uh, significant. And so then, technically, this value that we give you is this right there. Okay? So delta U equals, well, let's see. Now you still need to convert per the amount given in the equation. So this is per mole of the C388. And you're given one gram. 
So you'll need to multiply this. This is now a conversion problem. By the molar mass, and then the one there. That would be the basic setup. Can you do some that? How do I tell if it's a conversion problem? Uh, so you go back to the different types of delta H problems. When you're, you may or may not have a reaction, but you're given a delta H, but you want it for a different amount. So one gram, or all delta H's are given per mole of each species. So this is per mole of this, or per five moles of that, or three moles of that, or four moles of this. Our uh, species of interest is that one. So this per one mole of that, I get the one because of the one in front of here when it's balanced. And so, but I don't want one mole, I want the one gram. This would be a pretty classic conversion question. Okay? Okay, number three. Yes, did you have a question on this? Um, I have for another question. Oh, you're like number 10 or something right now. Okay. Awesome, way to go. Number three. This is a discussion worksheet. Oh, this is a fun part. A what part are you on? C. Okay. Uh, I want to try to do this without doing it out of parts. So we'll see if that's possible. Okay, this is a discussion worksheet in my class, I presume. It looks semi familiar. Okay. Uh, it has a big pressure of carbon tetrachloride and uh, this dichloroethane. It gives you the pure pressure, so I'm thinking Raoul's law is coming for that pure pressure. The word pure is the key. And I have two components. If the mass of one is that and the mass of the other uh, in the solution, the two substances boil at 75. Okay, so the first two it looks like you got right. You're set, uh, they want to just find the vapor pressure somewhere else. So you're just doing a wash and clap run because you have two states. That looks good. Use your results from A and B to find the mole a fraction of tetrachloride liquid in dichloroethane uh, liquid. So you're going to use these pressures that you're given. It looks like you've converted the pure pressures. So these are the new pure pressures that you just calculated. So what you're going to do, let me just set up like this. Let's say it's component I, for example. All you need to do, you already have this one right there, check. You've got that. That's what we did in A and B for each component. All you need to do now is find the mole fraction. And it looks like they give you the mass uh, in the question. Is that that kind of setup or am I missing anything? You only have one mass. Oh, you only have one mass, that of the carbon tetrachloride. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, basically, the mass of the CCl4, the carbon tetrachloride, you'll need to convert that to moles. So you'll have the moles of the carbon tetrachloride. So the mole fraction of the carbon tetrachloride is equal to the moles. Oops, I'm not CL4. Uh, the one that you don't have is the I'll put the dichloroethane, the other one. So this is your unknown right there. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, is this at the, oh, it's at the boiling point. So you also know that, uh, let's write this equation again. Again, you have this value. Uh, at the boiling point, this value is 1 atm. So I think you can back calculate to x. Is that okay? Okay. Awesome. Great question. What like about Okay, uh, you can read. Four. It's four once they're passed, but they had a question out there. I must have answered. Oh. Uh, I think it's in the practice exam for the third one. It's the conversion. They said uh, it gave you like a massive percent. And so I was wondering. 
What's that? Page 38. Give me a moment and I'll find that. You said 19? Yeah, I know I'm excited too. Okay. Uh, kind of like the setup and how it got there. Is that what you're looking for? Okay. Uh, determine the missing combustion reaction and its enthalpy. All right. I'm going to do this the easy way, but there's a hard way. Okay, I'll talk about the harder way after we do this. Is that good? Okay. The easy way was to carefully read the question and see that word right there. The combustion reaction. So I have a missing a blank plus O2 goes to CO2 and water. Okay. So I put that uh, adjective there on purpose. Okay. So you would go, oh my goodness, what could combust? And then you would see, well, I've got the carbons there and you know this is overall. It appears up here. The H2 is up there. But this one right there, which is an organic and can combust, is not included anywhere. That one has to be in the second reaction because everything in the overall must appear in one of those three reactions. So I bet it's related to the combustion of that. And which is uh, Let me write down here. So let's write the combustion reaction. Is this on screen? Oh, not quite. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll let uh, somebody else balance it, but this needs to be balanced. So we got that combustion reaction. You want to balance it, write it in the number two spot, right there where the question marks are, and then go through the normal procedure of, okay, let's go through each step. So, I need the same, I need, for example, C2H6 both on the same side. So I'd have to multiply this reaction and move that, just go by the minus one and move it over. That kind of process is okay. So you need to multiply for all three reactions. And then, there's the exciting part. Uh, let's say we got those multipliers. I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm just going to take the multipliers that I have kind of pre-found. So let's say you find those multipliers. It turns out that the first one is 2. The second one I'm going to multiply by minus a half. Remember, I didn't balance this. So once you balance it, it might change the what we thought was minus 1. And then uh, the third one's going to end up being 3 halves. OK, so what you're going to do, I'll try to fit it up here. Delta H total, the overall, which is minus 250, will equal delta H1 times 2 plus delta H2, that's the one we don't know, times minus a half, plus delta H3 times 3 halves. So you know total 1 and 3 you're going to solve for 2. That's the easy way to do it if you notice that word in combustion. If you didn't, you're going to have a lot more pain in your life. Uh, what you would need to do is find out what, uh, what is in the overall that doesn't appear up there, and also what doesn't cancel. So for example, C2H6 has to be up there somewhere. Uh, the carbon's up there, the H2 is up there. But we also need to make, see this, CO2 right here, that one. That has to cancel because it's not in the overall. So it has to be in the second reaction. Same with the water is not in the overall. That will have to cancel. So you're going to piece it together sort of like that. And it'll be a bit more painful. Is that kind of okay? Okay, your number five, six, seven. Yes. Page 13. Thirteen, nine. Uh, just the overall setup. Okay, setup. 
I don't have much room to write. I'll do my best. Okay, uh, cycle octane and the heat capacity accounter one time in the process. Okay, so you're going to do the same setup you'll, as a normal bomb calendar. You'll get this. You'll get to that point if that's okay. Uh, you're given C, it looks like. Heat capacity is this. So you have C. Delta T, do we have that? Well, that's the one we want to know. We don't know that. Uh, Q of reaction, we sort of have that. Uh, that's this one right here. Uh, but we have to mess with it a little bit. So this is going in the reverse direction of normal. Usually, you have delta T, you find Q of reaction, and then you divide it by the amount. We're going to go in reverse. We have the amount, and this final, and what is usually the final answer, we're going to have to multiply the amount by that. Give it a whole unit, and then plug that into our equation. So you want to tell me if this works for you if I need to write it down. Multiply these numbers right there. Get rid of the mold. In. Then put it in here. Again, the reverse of up normally, we find Q reaction and we divide it by this number to get this number. Is that okay? So it's just going backwards. Okay? Okay, you were seven. Is there an eight? I know there's a ten. Yeah, eight. Yes. Spring 2011, 11, page 41. 31. 41. 41. Even better. Page 41. Okay, we're going to have to close up shop soon-ish. What number? Eleven. Eleven. This one right here. You want a general like set up or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what was this one? It was argon. Uh, okay, per liter of water. So your STP, this is the old STP. Uh, what is the molarity of water? Okay, so this looks kind of related to a uh, Henry's law sort of question. We have something dissolved in a liquid of water. Okay, so I'm getting C equals KP. Okay, it was so of argon. So at 20, uh, it's at 1 atm. It's 33.7 milliliters. Okay, per liter of water, per liter of H2O. All right, then, uh, what is the molarity? in water that is saturated with air. So this is, this is just argon, and this is air. Okay. Uh, so this is 1 atm. And 20 degrees uh, C, same conditions, that's nice. Uh, but air only has point nine three four. Uh, percent argon. And that is the treatment Okay. What you're going to have to do, they don't give you K, notice that. So, but you have kind of two states of sorts. K equals C over P1, C over P2. Hold, I'm going to do this quickly, hopefully it makes sense. Okay, you kind of want C2, you want the second concentration. Uh, the first, uh, and then you have two pressures, really. Uh, you have argon at 0.934, really, percent or pressure, really, that you can use in the second scenario. Where in the first scenario, it's really at 1 atm. So the first scenario, it's all argon. In the second scenario, there's just a tiny bit of argon left. Uh, and this is in percent, so you really have to move the decimal over two more places. So it's point 00934 uh, in the second one and 1 in the first one. 
Okay, so you're going to use that ratio. Well, that was kind of quick, but hopefully it made sense. Okay. Okay. Ask me more in a second. I have, I think, two more people to get through. Okay. Yes, very quickly. Um, spring 2015, question number 16. Spring 2015. Page 23. 31? Page 23. 23. Number 15. Sixteen. Bomb calorimeter, benzoic acid. You got to keep it. It's the same setup as that other one. This. Okay. You've got the heat capacity check. You've got the initial temperature. You want the final again for solving for this, but for T final load. Q reaction is right here, but you need to multiply by that first and then put it in there and then solve for delta T. Okay, again, that was fast. That's me after if that was confusing. And then final person I think is up here. Yes? Can we go 2013 spring number six? What page? Um, I, I don't know. Okay, 2013 spring, spring? Yeah. number six? Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah. X and Y, the vapor pressure of X and Y, 0.2 and 0.1. Okay, it's a vapor pressure. So this is a mixture. I'll just say this quickly as well. Uh, it's asking about the mole fraction. X, uh, I think the mole, yeah, the mole fraction. Uh, so X. Is, can you see this? X, can you see it now? Yeah. PI over PI naught. Okay. Uh, so, the larger, uh, maybe I can say this way. Well, I'll just say the words. Um, it'll be a little faster. The larger the pure pressure, the more you're going to get in solution. Okay, so then you lead to a larger, whichever one that is, is a larger mole fraction. Okay, sorry to end super fast, but our reservation is out. <laughs>